We're here today on realairculture.com We're with David Phillips. He's with Environment Canada. Welcome today, David. Well, Sean, nice to be with you again. I thank you for inviting me on. Okay, David, uh, we have had a very uh, interesting season, to say the least. Uh, we had, a, across the prairies, we had a very, very wet spring, and summer's been a bit cooler. Uh, what are some of the reasons for that? Well, Sean, you know, I think the story has been, what a contrast. You know, when uh, I was talking to a number of growers um, in, by, say, mid-April, a lot of the worry was about drought. Uh, the D word was used. Uh, we had seen very dry conditions through the, the summer or through the winter period, through early spring. Um, the soil moisture was not recharged, and um, and those first few, those middle days of April, when it was raining all over the place, it was considered to be a a good news situation. People thought, "Wow, just keep this up, and we'll be happy." Well, the problem was that nature kept it up. And uh, and we saw going from from almost the the D word to the F word, from droughts to floods. Uh, we saw some incredible amount of rainfalls, frequent rains, heavy doses of rain, Texas gully washers, as we sometimes call them, and uh, in a good part of uh, of the grain growing area, the, the the food growing area of the southern prairies was was just drenched with uh, too much rain too many days with rain and not enough uh, warm temperatures. And yet up in the Grand Prairie area of Alberta, um, they still went through a, a dry, very dry period. They talk about the drought up there as opposed to parts of you know Medicine Hat through Saskatchewan into uh, southern Manitoba where it's just been rain, rain, and more rain. And uh, and, uh, and and we're seeing the, the wettest uh, growing season on record. I mean, smashing every record going. I look at the map of of, uh, of areas, probably the worst area is probably from Saskatoon through to Maple Creek and over to Medicine Hat, where we're seeing uh, well above double amounts of rain since um, since April one, and um, and some areas um, are, uh, are are every area is showing except for say uh, northwest of Edmonton are showing uh, uh, well above uh, uh, rainfall uh, totals. The the heat has been just not there. Um, it's not been as as cool as I think the numbers would tell you, uh, or or people thinking. Uh, certainly, um, but but with so much rain and cloud, it just doesn't feel warm. And yet, uh, there's certainly been much cooler um, uh, summers and growing season. But it's been all about the the wet and. Uh, and everything is delayed, as you know. I mean, two weeks to three weeks. Uh, now, if nature was fair, and it never is, I think, sometimes, um, we would hope for a summer uh, or a September like last year, which I'm still shaking my head about. Uh, this was your summer last year was in September. Uh, it was more hot days above 30. Uh, the warmest month in, in the whole year was in September. Uh, never have we seen that in a, in a century and a quarter of records. I mean, it just, it was a shocker. So can, uh, it, can pop- it happen two years in a row? Well, I would dare say no. Uh, I just don't think it was such an outlier, such something uh, that you might expect once in 300 years. You're not going to get a, 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 a back-to-back. Uh, it, it would be something that would be would help to save the bacon of the growers. I mean, this would clearly help them salvage uh, a kind of a growing season when prices are up, but my gosh, uh, uh, less uh, acreage seeded, and, uh, and uh, I mean, they're struggling to try to just make it a modest kind of a growing season uh, rather than a complete disaster. And uh, everybody is now worried about the frost. Everybody is concerned about, well, hey, okay, uh, we'll accept what we've had, but are we going to is nature going to give us a break here with some heat and some to stave off the the, the frost? And of course, if we look at the numbers, uh, we know that um, uh, frost is uh, rarely do we get through September without a frost. Uh, even even last year, there was a touch of frost at the end of September. But in some places, you went into October, which is almost unheard of. Uh, we know on the prairies, the southern prairies, we've had frost in August. Uh, so it's, uh, there's a window there quite crucial, and both the quality and the, and the quantity of the grain is affected by that frost. Now, of course, there's no models, Sean, that around. Uh, I'd be a charlatan if I said, well, okay, uh, you're going to avoid frost till, uh, till Thanksgiving. Uh, no, I, nobody can do that. We can look at our models and we can get a flavor, the personality of, of what we think the fall is going to be from now and through till, uh, till October. 
But all it does is give you general patterns or trends. It doesn't pick off a particular day. It's sort of like saying, well, you know, um, my daughter's getting married in uh, in in uh, in the fall. Um, what are the chances of it being uh, a frost on uh, you know October 29th? Well, a seasonal forecast doesn't tell you that, uh, um, but uh, we just get the flavor of it. And, and certainly, what we're seeing uh, in terms of um, of September and uh, and September and October uh, through the prairies is is normal to warmer than normal conditions. Uh, in Alberta, I would describe it as in September. September and October, we're looking at normal uh, temperatures. In Saskatchewan, pretty well that too. Um, and into Manitoba, probably a little warmer than, uh, than normal. does not necessarily say that you're not going to get a, a, a day or two of frost. We've already seen single-digit temperatures getting kind of low in, in parts of Alberta, a little scary for, uh, for some, uh, some people. And the, night, uh, the nighttime temperatures are, are single digits now. I mean, getting five or six degrees is not uncommon. And uh, so it's, uh, it's going to be a touch and go. I mean, I, I still think that uh, uh, we could get, um, we could certainly get some warmth and some sun, but uh, it's going to be hard to, the days are getting shorter, and it's going to be hard to stave off that, uh, that frost. But, so every day now is crucial, and the longer we can stave off the frost, get some warmth, get some dryness uh, too. And I look at the prospects for uh, precipitation, and, um, and again, it's uh, quite of a mixed, uh, mixed bag. It tends to be in, in Alberta, we're looking at uh, uh, near normal kind of conditions. And you know, farmers, growers are not greedy. If you just give them normal weather, they'd be happier than anything. It's this weird, wild, and wacky weather that drives them batty and, and causes bankruptcy. So um, what our models are showing is, um, is likely the best call would be normal conditions, which if was the case, we'd see um, uh, there's a, usually a 50% chance of frost in any particular growing season, uh, typically across the southern prairies around the, the middle of September. And, um, and, and typically um, that's about a one in two years you'll get frost. For example, in Calgary around the 10th of September, in Medicine Hat around the 20th of September, Regina around the 15th of September, Winnipeg around the 21st of September. So that's a one in two. But the, the hope is that we could stave that off until uh, uh, late September, early October and give growers a fighting chance to, to make something of this growing season. You said to me before in the past that uh, it's, it's much easier to predict uh, temperature in comparison to precipitation. Um, so it's just as much as a lot of farmers are concerned about the temperature, uh, they're also concerned about uh, the amount of precipitation we could get during the harvest season. Any indication or any anything uh, sort of uh, coming to your to your head as far as what kind of precipitation we may see this fall, based on the weather patterns we've seen? Well, Sean, you're right about that. I mean, it is really a crapshoot to try and get the uh, precipitation right. We we feel that temperature. We do have some uh, some skill. Uh, precipitation, it's because people ask for it that we have to deliver it. I think most uh, climatologists who are in this business of providing long-term forecasts would rather stay away from precipitation because the whole question, the whole issue becomes one of, you know, one one rainstorm can can blow you out of the water, so mm. to speak. Well, um, I think, and the amount of rainfall is all relative, right? Somebody, uh, how much precipitation we need or how much, oh boy, that was a lot of rain. That comment is very, very relative. Well, it is. And also, besides that, it's the timing of everything. I mean, you could certainly get in a one-month period. You could have one record rainfall, but my gosh, it could leave, um, you know, 30 days uh, dry and sunny, which wouldn't have the impact. But if you get that same amount of rain uh, spread evenly over 30 days, hey, it's... Uh, it, it could be disaster. So it, it really is both the timing and the, and the amount, I suppose. But again, our models are showing, uh, and, and I don't know why I'm going there because we don't necessarily have a lot of skill, but we're showing, at least in the western prairies, uh, uh, normal amounts of, um, uh, I mean, just look at our, my map now, we're showing um, uh, really from Alberta, Saskatchewan, and western Manitoba, we're showing in the September-October period of what I would describe as normal amounts of precipitation, and uh, and and uh, perhaps in September, 
Uh, again, normal for Alberta and maybe a little wetter than normal for Saskatchewan and Manitoba. But again, as I say, I wouldn't bet the family farm or the fishing fleet on that particular uh, uh, forecast. I think it's, it's one of, uh, it's almost as if what we're doing right now here in the middle or towards the end of August is, is saying, well, you know, this would be great if this was the first of August and, uh, and uh, we need uh, we need to find two weeks where we're we're left alone from Mother Nature that we just get some some unusual some some abnormally warm conditions dry conditions and sunny conditions uh, would 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 absolutely be what the doctor orders. But um, but nature is going to give what it wants to give. But uh, but right now I think the prospects are not too bad. I mean I would look at our forecast our seasonal forecast and say you know I, I would accept that forecast uh, given what you've had. Because um, it, it uh, there looks like some good drying and uh, and growing conditions in that uh, in the next uh, a few weeks. 